Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. This is the uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee. I'm going to call it to order. I am Council Member Cam Gordon, Chair of the Committee, and I'm joined by Council Members Fry, uh, Bender, Andrew Johnson, Glidden, and Kano. Um, we only have three items uh, on our agenda today. Two are consent items, and then we have a, a very interesting presentation from the Health Department on youth development and youth violence and our efforts um, to support one but not necessarily the other. <clears throat> um, the consent items I'll read, and if any of my colleagues would like to pull one up for discussion, we can. The first one is having to do with our maternal and child home visiting program. We're going to amend the contract with the Minnesota Department of Health to extend the contract termination date by six months and accept additional revenue in the amount of $60,000 for home visiting services for women and young children. This will be referred to a uh, Ways and Means Committee um, and will also um, increase the appropriation for the Health Department in the grants and federal fund. And the second item is to set a public hearing for September 8th, 2014 to consider the subject matter of an ordinance repealing provisions related to restroom facilities. Uh, I'm going to move both of those items. If there's any questions or discussion, we can take that. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those motions carry. Uh, next, we have a, uh, a staff report and a presentation um, on our youth development and youth uh, violence. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if Coral is here. Oh, there you are. Couldn't see you behind that. Um, Ms. Coral Gardner is here, our, our Director of Adolescent Health and Youth Development, I think, to tee this up. Welcome. Sorry, I missed you there. No, that's all right. Good afternoon, Council Member Gordon and other members of the committee. Uh, my name is Coral Garner, and I am the director for the Adolescent Health and Youth Development Program. And Josh, I'm gonna invite you up here to <laughs> work the clicker for me. Okay. Okay, this is uh, an overview of our division. In our division, we have three uh, major programs, our Minneapolis uh, school-based clinic program, which is located in seven Minneapolis public high school locations, and our uh, youth development uh, uh, services, which include planning, policy, and outreach to youth serving organizations, as well as our youth violence prevention uh, initiative, which includes our work around the blueprint, community engagement, and uh, early youth intervention programs. We have approximately 28 full-time and part-time staff in our division, and also we are a training site for medical residents, for mental health uh, therapists and social workers, and we also use uh, several undergrad and graduate students as interns for several of our initiatives. As I mentioned, I am the director of the division, and I also would like to take the time to introduce some of our staff. Olivia Walker is our youth development coordinator. Is Olivia here? Okay. Uh, Josh Peterson is our youth intervention coordinator. Sasha Cotton, who's on vacation, is our, our youth violence prevention coordinator. Uh, also, Barbara Kyle is our school based clinic manager. Um, and I don't th think Barbara's here. And then Connie Rhodes is our Minneapolis bill facilitator. Paul Redman is our Miracle Vista, and we also have an intern, uh, Aria Weatherspoon, and I don't know if our urban scholar is here. I know we asked her to stay another week, and her name is Regina Cole. I also have uh, today some of the staff that work with uh, several initiatives. We have staff here from Tubman. You want to raise your hands? Uh, we have one of our youth from Tubman. And then we also have uh, members of our Build Leadership Project uh, here as well, who will be presenting later in the presentation. So the Division of Adolescent Health and Youth Development uses a public health framework to minimize barriers to health and promote supportive resources for our most disadvantaged youth. Our work focuses on promoting healthy behavior through connection to school, family, and community. And we do this by ensuring that policy and programs for youth are aligned with positive youth development theory, uh, by promoting and advocating for data-informed and culturally specific approaches to service delivery, and by creating and maintaining a collaborat collaborative partnerships addressing disparities through youth development. 
This schematic actually shows who we work with. We work collaboratively with other governmental jurisdictions, uh, public and charter schools, local advocacy groups, and youth-serving organizations. And an example of some of our collaborative work is a joint powers agreement, which uh, manages the Juvenile Supervision Center, which is a partnership between Hennepin County, Minneapolis Public Schools, and the LINK. And our focus is to address services for low-level offenders in Minneapolis. So a question that we often get asked by elected officials is what is the city getting as a return on investment in youth development programming? And so I just wanted to include this schematic. The blue box represents uh, some results from uh, a statewide study that was done by Wilder in 2007. And basically what they said it was for every dollar invested in out of school time programming, there's a $3 return on investment. And for every dollar invested in youth intervention programming, there's a $14 return on investment. So you can see where uh, our work becomes critical. Um, it's a minimal amount of uh, investment, yet we get a, a very large return on that investment, which I think is better than paying 45000 annually to confine a person in a juvenile correction center. Our work helps to break the cycle of violence through work readiness and life skills development, reduction in risky behavior in connection to school and to, to social and emotional learning and positive adult relationships. And building these types of protective factors help to improve the likelihood that our youth have the resources they need to successfully graduate from school. Another critical component of our work is working in partnership with families and communities as well as reviewing best practices to see how we can help to develop and or advocate for culturally specific approaches in order to help to dismantle some of the biases, racial microaggression, and misunderstanding that often occurs. This schematic basically tells you how our money is spent. Uh, roughly, we get about 1.6 million, a little over 1.6 million for youth development and youth violence prevention programming. This does not include the funding that we get for our school-based clinics or for the home visiting, visiting services for uh, teen parents. But as you can see, the money that we receive from the, uh, the city, the general fund money, is critical to our work. And if you have questions uh, about this, I can answer those at the end of the presentation. As we think about the mayor's three themes, uh, equity, growing the city, and, and running the city well, you can see how our work is integral to all three areas. Healthy uh, and positive youth development is the deliberate process of providing all youth with the support, relationships, experiences, resources and opportunities needed to become successful and competent adults. And the, the readiness target is just uh, an example. I think it comes from Ready by 21. It talks about those protective factors that are needed in order for youth to succeed and become successful. And so we work really at addressing some of the economic behavior and environmental challenges that create barriers for our youth. This just gives you an example of some of our work and initiatives, um, and we work across three areas, youth development, youth intervention, and youth violence prevention. And so those are just some examples of our work in sexual health, out of school time, and um, et cetera. Um, so now I'd like to talk about, specifically about uh, some of the work that we've done this past year. We were fortunate in 2014 to receive a significant amount of money from the city as well as from a state and federal government. Um, some of it was related to being recognized as a national uh, forum city around youth violence. And um, this is our, the mission for our um, Youth Violence Initiative work. It's a unified city where all youth can be safe and thrive. And so I'll just spend a few minutes talking about some of our programs from this summer. So the pop-up parks, this was the first summer that we launched this idea. And the idea actually was a result of feedback that we received from our Youth Violence Prevention Executive Committee as well as the Northside uh, Community Summit that was convened by the Minneapolis Police Department. And the health department uh, partnered with Minneapolis Parks 
and Rex and with the police department uh, and provided seed money to implement 48 pop-up parks between June 16th and August 14th at various parks and vacant lots near Minneapolis violent uh, crime hotspots. This is just uh, some of the pictures from our work this summer and some quotes from some of the youth. We're hoping to be able to continue this partnership and really uh, perfect the concept uh, uh, next summer. Uh, the idea of the partnership it actually had three goals. It was to mobilize the city around public safety and to encourage young people to enjoy safe pro-social activities. And the goals were to interrupt and prevent crime, engage youth ages 12 to 17 with opportunities for pro-social engagement, and to encourage community members to come out of their homes and meet their neighbors and get to know each other. And I mean, the participation at the various parks uh, varied. We had um, uh, one at Golden Valley and Penn Avenue, Cedar Field, um, just a, a, examples of a couple of places where the uh, pop-up parks took place. Participation varied anywhere from 40 to 100 youth to, to attend. Inspiring Youth is a youth intervention program piloted by the city, and it's based on the uh, Chicago Culture of Calm uh, initiative. Uh, in 2000, I think it was around 2010, 2011, we had a presentation from uh, some folks from Chicago Public Schools to talk about efforts that they were doing in the schools to identify kids that were at risk or um, of either being victims of violence or perpetrating violence, and um, they did a presentation about their Culture of Calm program, which used a predictive model to identify youth most at risk of violence or victimization. And um, since 2011, we've, we've been planning, we were able to get money um, in two, 2013 uh, to hire Josh. And this year, we actually started our, our case management program, which you'll hear a little bit about later. But the focus of the group, uh, the program has three main components, case management, a retrospective data analysis to help to identify um, risk indicators, and also a multidisciplinary monitoring and program planning component. As I mentioned, we, we uh, piloted our case management program this year. Uh, Tubman is our, our contract um, agency that we're working with. We've been able to uh, provide services to two Minneapolis public school sites, Sanford and, uh, on the south side and Olson on the north side. There's a very specific um, referral criteria that we used. Uh, we have social workers to, um, from the schools that actually identify a vendor and uh, refer youth to the program. And our hope is, you can flip to the next slide, that uh, there are plans also on the way to try to uh, integrate some of the work that we're doing with this program with the uh, police department's juvenile diversion program. And our goal is to serve up to 40 youth and provide uh, six months of service to each of those youth. Could I just stop for a question here? Mm -hmm. um, could you just tell us a little bit more about what are the criteria that the social workers are looking for? I, I think last time I heard about it, we didn't know they would necessarily be referred by the social worker. That makes a lot of sense, I, I guess, and we're working only at two schools because we okay. have limited resources. But what are they? Uh, to qualify for these extra services? So the criteria are to, to, to either, the, the student has to either have been involved with violence at the school or either as a perpetrator or a victim. Uh, there's some known gain involvement or they have one or more of the following like poor, poor school attendance, lack of engagement in school, disciplinary issues in the school um, such as up or including suspension, criminal activity, uh, prior victimization, antisocial, delinquent, aggressive or violent behavior, alcohol and drug use, mental health issues, weak social ties, or, or homelessness or precarious uh, housing. So those are the criteria that the social workers are using. We're also, uh, as I mentioned, a big part of that is really trying to, to develop a predictive model to um, a better identify youth that we would want to include in the program. And so we're partnering with the University of Minnesota um, to do a retro analysis of uh, data from the police department, welfare data, and, as well as data from Minneapolis Public Schools. And what we hope 
what that, that we find out from the study is a way to better fine tune some of these indicators. And then just to clarify then, each um, student who's referred gets a case manager? Each student is referred gets a case manager and um, the agency, well Tubman is our contracted agency, they uh, meet with uh, the social worker, they also meet with the family to see if they're in, uh, interested in the services because it's, it's voluntary. And if they are interested in the services, they do an assessment and from there identify what services are needed. So sometimes the focus is just on the student, but then sometimes the focus may be broader than that. It may be a focus on the family. So they'll work with a, a variety of the um, supportive needs that that family may have, as well as um, help around academic support, um, mentoring, uh, and referral to mental health services that need be. And we've definitely had 40 um, individuals and families agree to this and are participating now, or are we still? To, we're, we're still building the project. Okay. So to date, we have how many enrolled? 13 since the beginning of June. 13 since the beginning of June. Okay. So again, um, it's, a, it's a relatively new project. I think it, we will build momentum going into um, the upcoming school year, um, just based on conversations that I've had with Minneapolis Public School staff around some of their work with, in addressing school climate and um, safe and supportive schools. Um, so we'll, we'll see. And the last question, I think it's a two-year project, is that right? We have funding for just we one year. We received funding for one year. So that was for 24 for this current year. And we've um, submitted a, as a part of the budget request from our department a request for funding for 2015. From uh, general, from general funds. fund? And do you from know if that's, funds. is that it, in the mayor's? It was um, included in the mayor's recommendation at okay. $100,000. Which could help. Which could help us have case managers for how many? Which will kids? would that continue the forty for another year? We no, think? it actually will increase that because we have received some requests from um, some high schools and other schools as well. And do you remember exactly? I can't remember exactly what the projected increase would be, but I can definitely provide that information later. It would seem like that would make a lot of sense to expand to other schools, especially if we seem to be, t t t you know, at setting at 13 or under 20 from the two schools we've started with. And so, um, all right, thank you okay. very much. And, and appreciate all the, uh, that Harriet Tubman is, folks are here, um, probably have a lot of uh, expertise too. Okay. So Bill Minneapolis is our game prevention program targeting youth uh, ages nine to 18 throughout the city. Uh, Bill's mission is to engage at-risk youth in the schools and on the streets so they can realize their educational and career potential and contribute to the stability, safety, and well-being of our, our communities. Um, we partner with various uh, youth-serving organizations. Our role really is to train community-based agencies on the use of the Bill curriculum. It's one of the promising practices recommended by uh, from the Office of Juvenile and Justice uh, Delinquency and Prevention. Uh, so far, we have over 60 youth workers uh, representing 20 organizations that have signed on and are receiving the training and implementing the program. And by the end of the year, we project that uh, uh, 170 youth will have participated uh, in either a prevention or intervention program. Another component of that has been our Build Leadership Project. Uh, this is just a, a mural from one of, our, one of our sites at Urban Arts Academy. Is and the Bill Leadership Program actually is kind of an out, outgrowth, out, outgrowth from Build, and it came about uh, from a partnership with, with the Health Department, Northside Youth Collaborative, which is a, a network of youth serving organizations on the North Side, and Emerge Community Development, which is a community based organization on the North Side. Um, there was so much interest in the Bill uh, curriculum that um, we decided that we wanted to pilot a, a peer leadership program uh, using the Bill model called Bill Leaders. And this is just a picture of one of our Bill Leaders, uh, Sodan, uh, and being interviewed by Carrie Levin. They did a piece on us this summer. The Bill Leaders are ages 18 to 24, and they are trained in delivering the, the Bill curriculum to um, actually youth as young as eight to 12 years of age in four locations across North Minneapolis. 
And that's another uh, picture of some of our staff recruiting you. So um, I'll, we'll also have the bill leaders to come up and discuss the program. But before they speak, I just wanted to share with you some of the, of the successes from the past two years. Um, so I think that really the strength of our program is our partnerships and collaborations. Uh, we've been able to improve in, uh, efficiencies in our existing programs, such as the Juvenile Supervision Center. And also our work has resulted in funding of, uh, of new programs through some of the planning and program development that we've done, um, such as our Minneapolis Bill and our Minneapolis Bill Leadership Program. We've gotten interest from uh, JJAC um, at the state and also from United Way to field, uh, uh, fund those initiatives. Our inspiring youth program is a result of funding we received from the city. And we also received uh, federal funding to uh, support Minneapolis Public Schools and a safe and supportive initiative. And hopefully we'll receive additional funding next year to continue that work. And then our, our work has been recognized nationally. Our, our blueprint has been recognized by the Centers of uh, Disease Control and uh, Unity. And our work around teen pregnancy has been recognized by the National Association of um, City and County Health Officials as a promising practice. And as well as our staff have been identified as um, uh, to provide technical leadership to the juvenile justice reform uh, network nationally. So, Kashana, is that how you pronounce it? I, I didn't pronounce it correctly. Sakina. Oh my gosh. Sakina, I apologize. <laughs> we'll come up and speak, and, uh, and after her, we'll have uh, Kashan Richard to come up and talk about the bill program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Harriet Summon has helped me with many struggles I found to, hard to do by myself. It has helped me set realistic goals for myself and helped me prioritize these goals, helping me to be a positive person by showing me the positive and healthy things in our community. Patty has taken me to see positive role models. Ashley Lauren, the owner of Diva Rags, was one of these role models. Ashley has taught me many things such as school comes first and boys come last, and reach high and even told me about being my own boss. Patty has also taken me to clay class. Clay class was really fun being able to get out the house and to have the experience on making clay was a positive experience for me that I enjoyed. Patty has also taken me out to eat so we can discuss my goals and achievements. Patty has helped me with so many things and has helped me to realize my potential. Patty is a really fun, helpful, kind person, and I love being in this program. I think more kids need to know about this program. This will really help them with their goals that need to be accomplished, or just a person to help guide them along. Not every parent has much time in their hands, or even some kids come from bad homes and need positive support and positive reinforcement in their lives. As Harriet Tubman said, I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew they were slaves. Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman was a hero to many. This program has taken the name of a great hero, and this is how I would identify this program. They are heroes, and they are helping in our communities to free us from the negative that surrounds us every day in society. This program can free many youth from a negative lifestyle if only this program remains present. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> peace, everyone. My name is Kashan Richard. As you can see, I'm part of the BUILD leadership, one of the facilitators at North Regional Library. And, hi, my name is Solden Armstrong, and I'm one of the lead BUILD leaders, and I'm facilitating at Sumner Library. Welcome. Hi, my name is Tyrone Height, and I'm one of the bill leaders who facilitates at the North Regional Library. Thanks for being here. You already gave the spill of what we do, so I don't know what to say now. <laughs> so uh, pretty much we're open for any questions that you guys have for us. And then Soda had. Oh, yeah, I'll just read what I, because I was, 
Uh, yo, uh, my name is Soldan Armstrong, and I'm a part of this program. Uh, first off, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I was raised in uh, North Minneapolis. Uh, growing up in North Minneapolis, you see it. There's a lot of violence. Uh, I witnessed a lot of that violence, and it uh, had an effect on me. Uh, I felt like growing up around North Minneapolis and seeing that the violence like started to feel normal to me. Like to see stuff going on, I was like, "This is how it's supposed to be." But but I realized um, that I, I had I no longer wanted to be a part of that problem, and I knew it was a problem. It's like something that always told me that it was a problem, but. It felt normal at the same time. So, but once I realized that it was a problem, I I wanted it to be a I wanted it to be a part of the solution. So I turned my um, so I started to turn myself around and better and tried to better my community. Um, well, I had time to think about what I wanted to do when I start to better my community. So I started by uh, joining the restorative justice program and I've been doing working with them and I've uh, just go to my local parks and help kids out a lot and that's where I met Kanye at, at a pop-up park and she introduced me to the Bill Leadership Program and I thought it was a good idea to like what they was present coming with because that's what I feel like my purpose is is to help kids so the rest from there was history like uh, just been doing it, rocking with it for, and it's been working a lot. Like the kids love me. Like at Sumner, I'm like, like everybody's uncle around there, you know. So, yeah, uh, it's good, and it's uh, like I don't feel like enough kids have like that role model of a male in their house, and for us, it's not. We have girls, females too, but kids need them. But it's like a lot of men that don't do enough, and they like that. So when I come, it's amazing. And that's it. Thank you. I, I think Council Member Glidden has a question or comment. All right. Well, you invited a question, so. <laughs> It could be for anybody. I was just curious, since this is the first year for the program, how you thought being in the program helped your own uh, leadership. You know, what did you feel like was something you got out of the program from this summer? Uh, well, I Might help us think about it for future years, too. So. Uh, what I get out of it is the reward of feeling at the end of the day that I did something for my community. I gave back to the community that helped raise me. Um, <clears throat> it taught me a lot of things. It, just, it gave me, well, when it comes to like facilitation, I already have, have been trained for that, but it, uh, it's opening up a lot more opportunities. Uh, it's uh, challenging my leadership skills, and every day it's telling me, forcing me to step up to the plate and better myself, and not only myself, the community. I was just at the Minneapolis Public Schools back to school jam on Saturday and I seen a couple of my kids from my library and kids from other libraries and it was very rewarding to be there with my family and to see the kids run up to me and they talk about all the cool things that we've done at the library to their parents already and like that's that's the one thing I could say I could take from the program that's I'm proud to say that I was a part of. Anybody else want to? Uh, basically what I get from the program is like the reward of giving back to some of the kids and like actually being there to guide them to their future like as far as wanting to be role models and like leaders of their community and feeling like they can actually accomplish something versus being drawn into the violence and the gangs and whatever with like all of the stuff going around in the neighborhood and I think it's just it's a blessing like just to be able to know that you had an impact on some of the kids lives around like your community and to actually see the change that they make like 
we don't see like dramatic changes like right away, but to see like the small changes, like as far as like them hold opening the door for their elders and no ma'am, yes ma'am, no sir, yes sir, and stuff like that. Like that's basically it. It inspires me in a way to want to continue to better myself, and it changes my mindset. Like it makes me think about life and all whole nother way like it just keeps me moving forward at the same time yeah thank you wonderful councilmember johnson thank you mr chair or did you want to add uh well i'm basically the same thing okay. like yeah okay i'm good all right go ahead sorry about that well thank you mr chair and i just want to thank um all three of you for and all the others for uh your work in the community and making a difference in the lives of others as well in the community. It's uh, just so incredibly important. And on a related note, I'm wondering, um, given this leadership opportunity, are you aware or more aware of other leadership opportunities within the community, whether that's through the neighborhood associations or our open boards and committees? And then also, are you, are you planning on uh, taking advantage of any of those opportunities? Because we certainly would like you to. Yeah, yeah, because I done seen a couple. Um, just uh, two and a half weeks ago, I believe, we was um, accepted for a micro grant by the uh, health department, $3,350. And uh, one thing that us as a group came about is uh, usually when nonprofit organizations are around, they tend to compete with each other for the grant money. So we decided since we got rewarded this grant money that we were going to throw a back to school block party that will uh, promote unity in the community. So uh, any organization is welcome to come and put up a boost and promote their organization. We're not we're not greedy. We're going to share the uh, publicity and pretty much, like I said, show unity in the community. And I've been to a couple of uh, community engagements uh, the last couple months this entire summer. And um, <clears throat> I've noticed a lot of opportunities. Just the uh, last week, me and Tyrone, we walked into a knock neighborhood organizing for change. And we was uh, following up on a one-on-one -on -one and uh, making sure that they was coming to the uh, event that we have this Friday. And we pretty much landed a job there because they liked how we uh <laughs> They liked how we presented the build curriculum and how we uh, presented ourselves and the things that we're into. And yes, I, me, like I said, I, I'm trying to get into as much uh, civic action as much as possible because like I said, my goal in life is to give back to the community that helped raise me, not take my knowledge and go and make profit for myself. That wouldn't be right, you know, so. And I also know that that little bit of mentorship can go a long way, trust me. Like if I didn't have the trusted adults that, if I didn't have the people that wanted to see me succeed, I don't know if I would be right here talking to you guys right now. So that's the reason why I want to continue this work because I know I'm not going to reach every kid that comes into my classroom or every kid that I talk to, but at least if I could reach that one, then that's all the difference because maybe that one can reach 10 and maybe that 10 can reach 100. And that's the goal at the end of the day. Anyone else with thoughts related to that? He I would pretty much just put it all in one. I, well, I, I one think it's wonderful what you're doing, and, and I just encourage you to keep staying involved and look for those next level opportunities. And whether that's running to be a board member on your neighborhood association or um, reaching out to one of the council members uh, to serve on one of the city's boards or commissions. Um, and you might even be up here uh, serving with us as well at some point in the near future. So I just continue to encourage you to um, stay involved and take advantage of those opportunities. And thank you again for your, your work. Uh, are you opening the door for opportunity? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There's a lot of opportunities. Absolutely. So well, I'll be glad to walk through that door. Maybe we should talk after this. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any uh, closing comments or? Are there any questions? So is the uh, BUILD program, uh, do we um, pay the youth uh, in, who are going through the leadership development? Yes. yes. Okay. And are they pretty happy with what they're getting paid or do you think they should get a raise? <laughs> <laughs> actually, we've been talking about that because they actually are working only 10 hours a week. However, they really work 
Connie. Hi, I'm Connie. Hi. Um, actually, their um, contractors will work 10 hours a week. However, as we're as this is a pilot, we're finding they really are working 20 hours a week. And so it would be great if we had some additional funding so that they could get paid for those 20 hours. So right now they're a 10 hours volunteer and about 10 hours that they're paid. And they're doing a wonderful job. And you say it's a pilot, and how long is the pilot going to run for? Uh, we have it for three cohorts, which is one year. And this is the year? It's through December. Okay. Um, that sounds like something we might want to try repeating, though. Yes, um, I agree. And look at for next year. Um, and where does the funding come from? Accountability Block Grant. Yeah, we're currently funded by the Department of Safety um, through the Juvenile Justice Advisory Committee. And again, um, we've had about 18 months of funding, um, nothing through general fund. Um, we were able to, um, as they mentioned, get money through the United Way um, to help support the program actually through May 2015. But after that, we're still looking for additional funding. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I don't see any other questions or comments. Uh, I really appreciate everybody being here for the uh, for the presentation and for the discussion, especially for the youth to, to show up and give us your perspective. It's very important for us to, to hear as well. Um, and I will move to receive and file the presentation then. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, that motion carries and there's no further business before us. So this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>